In this video, we're going to talk about the partial fractions decomposition of a rational expression. Partial fractions decomposition is that you're going to undo the addition or subtraction of algebraic fractions. So the idea is when you add or subtract them, you're going to combine them together as a single fraction whose denominator is the least common denominator. But with the partial fractions decomposition, we want to expand that single fraction as the sum or difference of several fractions. Now, a bit of caution here. What we're going to talk about in this video only applies to proper algebraic fractions, proper meaning that where the degree of the numerator, the degree of the top, is less than the degree of the bottom. If that's not the case, what you can do is uh, use polynomial division. You'll get a quotient and a remainder. The quotient, you just leave as the quotient, and then the remainder, if possible, uh, well, certainly the remainder will have a uh, will be a proper algebraic fraction. So if possible, you could find the partial fraction decomposition of the remainder. So let's just review adding and subtracting just to kind of refresh our memory. Um, so if I have uh, 2 over x plus 1 minus 3 over x plus 1 squared plus 5 over x minus 2. Remember the LCD, you take each individual or each prime factor, and then uh, raised to the highest power in which it appears in any of the denominators. So I have an x plus 1, but then I have an x plus 1 squared. That comes into the LCD. I only have 1 x minus 2, so I have one factor of x minus 2 in the LCD. So I go ahead and rewrite all of the uh, fractions with the same common denominator, the LCD. I do that by using a multiplication by a form of one. I just look at what I have, what is missing in order to get to the LCD, and I multiply top and bottom by what is missing. And then I can write it uh, as a single fraction and remove the parentheses and collect like terms. Here's another example. Um, here, my denominators, x squared plus 1, x squared plus 2, those are prime polynomials. They cannot be factored. They are, another word for prime would be irreducible. You cannot reduce it any further. So the LCD is just the product. So again, I use multiplying by a form of 1 to write every uh, fraction with the LCD multiply it out, and go ahead and collect the like terms. So the partial fractions decomposition is going to work that process in reverse. We're going to start with a single fraction, and then we're going to determine well, what were the denominators, possible denominators, that were used to create the LCD, and then from there figure out, well, what should the numerators be for each of those denominators? So let's see how we do that. We're going to have four cases here that's based on the types of factors that are in the LCD. And our first case, the LCD has or the denominator of the single fraction has non-repeated linear fractions. So linear means that we only have an exponent of one. So just the variable by itself in the factors. And non-repeated means that they're as a factor, they're not squared or cubed. They're just uh, factors by themselves. And in that case, in order to get the partial fractions decomposition, 
um, you're going to have one term for each factor in the denominator. And the numerator is some unknown constant. And we're going to have to do some work to determine what those constants are. And for all of these partial fraction techniques, all four cases, it's actually um, pretty hard to write down a clear explanation. But once you see the examples, it's much clearer. So let's find the partial fraction decomposition of 3x squared plus 2 over x cubed minus x. So if we don't have the denominator factored, we're going to go ahead and perform the factorization. There's a common factor of x. And then I can factor x squared minus 1 as x plus 1 times x minus 1. So there's three factors. So I expect to get three terms in the partial fraction decomposition, some constant a over the first factor, a constant b over the second factor, and some constant c over the third factor. Now to determine those, our first step is to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. That just gives me a polynomial on the left-hand side and a polynomial on the right-hand side, but with these unknown values a, b, and c. But these are equal to each other. These polynomials are equal to each other. And the only way that two polynomials can be equal to each other for all values of x is if the corresponding coefficients are equal to each other. In other words, whatever I have multiplied by x squared on the left must be the same as what I have multiplied by x squared on the right. So in this case, I went ahead and explicitly collected the like terms. So I found that in my expressions here, the coefficient on x squared, are, I have an a plus a b plus a c. And on x, there's a minus b and a plus c. And then the only constant term comes from the first term. When I multiply that out, I get a minus a. So what we're going to do is write a system of equations by setting the corresponding coefficients equal to each other. In other words, the a plus b plus c should equal 3. The negative b plus c should equal, well, 0, because there is no term on the left-hand side multiplied times x. That's the same as having 0 times x. And then negative a has to equal the constant on the left-hand side. Negative a has to equal 2. So you get a system of equations. Uh, systems of equations can be time consuming to solve, but not in this case, because I can see that since uh, negative a equals 2, immediately I see that I have uh, a equals negative 2. Since negative b plus c equals 0, that means b equals c. And so I can go ahead and put negative 2 in the place of a and go ahead and put. Um, c in the place of b. Solve that equation for c. So c will be 5 halves and b is the same 5 halves. So now I go back to my expansion and I know a, b, and c now. I know those values. So the partial fractions expansion is negative 2 over x plus 5 halves over x plus 1 plus 5 halves over x minus 2. In the second case, we're still going to have linear factors, but some of them may be repeated. So repeated means that as the factor, in the factorization, that factor has an exponent which is greater than 1. In that case, I'm going to get more terms, because for 
if I have a factor which is repeated m times, so in other words, its exponent is m, not only will I get the ax plus b, but I'll have to use ax plus b squared, ax b plus b cubed, and so on, until I reach ax plus b to the power of m. And then still, I just have some constant in the numerator that I need to solve for. So let's look at an example again to make more sense of what I just said. We have this uh, fourth degree polynomial in the top. So 3x to the fourth plus 13x cubed plus 17x squared plus 20x plus 20 all over x cubed in parentheses x plus 2 squared. So the x is repeated three times. The x plus 2 is repeated twice. So I need to have a constant over x, a constant over x squared, and a constant over x cubed. That's for the x cubed factor. For the x plus 2 squared, I'll need a constant over x plus 2 and another constant over x plus 2 squared. Find the value of these five numbers, a, b, c, d, and e. I'll use the same technique. I'm going to multiply the entire equation, so all of the terms on both sides, by the LCD. And then I can go about this in several different ways. I could go ahead and expand these, which is what I did. I went and expanded on the right hand side all of those polynomials. And I'm not going to explicitly collect uh, the uh, terms on the different powers of x like I did in the previous example. What I'm going to do is kind of an inspection. I'm going to say, all right, let me set the, the coefficients on the x to the power of 4 equal to each other. So on the left-hand side, my coefficient on x to the power of 4 is 3. And on the right-hand side, if I were to multiply these out, I would have an ax to the 4th and a dx to the 4th. So a plus d has to equal 3. Now I'll move on to the powers, I mean, sorry, the coefficients of x cubed. On the left-hand side, I've got 13. On the right-hand side, I have a times 4x cubed, so that would be 4a plus b, b gets multiplied times x cubed, and then finally 2d x cubed, and then e x cubed. So that's sum 4a plus b plus 2e plus 2d plus e is going to equal 13. Okay, let's move on to x squared. On the left-hand side, I have a 17. What's multiplied by x squared on the right-hand side? Well, I have 4a and then plus 4b plus c. All right, what about the x term? On the left-hand side, I have 20. Nothing from a, but b, I have a 4b times x, a 4c times x, and nothing from d or e. So 4b plus 4c has to equal 20. And then finally, the linear term. The only linear term I have on the right-hand side is a multiple of c, so 4c equals 20. So even though there are five unknowns, uh, these equations uh, should lend themselves to a fairly simple solution. So let's go about it. The very last equation tells me that c equals 5, so I can go ahead and put 5 in the place of c in the equation above it. When I do that, I find b equals 0. 
So I can go ahead and put c equals 5 and b equals 0 into the equation above that. That will get me 4a plus 5 equals 17, or 4a equals 12, so a equals 3. Now if a equals 3, I can go to the top equation and use the fact that a equals 3 to show that d must equal 0. And now I'm left with uh, finding the value of e, and I can use all of my known values in the second equation to get the equation that 12 plus e equals 13, so e must equal 1. So now that I have all of the unknown constants, I can go ahead and write out the partial fractions decomposition. The next two cases, so case three, is where the denominator has non-repeated, irreducible quadratic factors. That is a mouthful. Quadratic, I think we know it means the exponent is two. Irreducible means that you can't factor it any further, cannot be factored any further using rational coefficients. And non-repeated is the same idea that we saw before. So what's different here is when your numerator, I'm uh, sorry, when your denominator is a quadratic, you want your numerator to be a linear term. So it's going to be some unknown constant times x plus another unknown constant. So let's look at an example to make sense of this. I'd like to find the partial fraction decomposition of 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 3x minus 15 all over x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2. Well, I see that I have a common factor of 3 there. Um, but I'm not going to take advantage of that here. What I am going to do is factor the denominator. x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2 can be factored as x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 2. Now, neither one of those can be factored using rational numbers. So they are irreducible. And they're not repeated. So my partial fractions decomposition is going to look like, well, some number a times x plus another number b over my first quadratic factor plus cx plus d over my second quadratic factor. Now, once I've written this uh, um, partial fractions decomposition, Finding the unknowns uh, uses the same technique no matter what type of uh, denominators I'm working with, whether they're linear, quadratic, repeated, or otherwise. Uh, we'll multiply both sides of the equation, every term, by the least common denominator. And that will give me one polynomial equals another polynomial. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and multiply out those polynomials uh, on the uh, right-hand side. And now I'm going to use this inspection technique to figure out what my system of equations will be. In other words, I'm going to set the coefficients from the left-hand side and the right-hand side for each power of x equal to each other starting with x cubed. So on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, I have 3. And on the right-hand side, uh, I have an ax cubed and a cx cubed. So a plus c has to equal 3. For x squared, on the left-hand side, I have 9. And on the right-hand side, I have bx squared plus dx squared. So that would just be b plus d would have to equal 9. 
And then for the x term, the coefficient on the left is 3. And I have a minus 2ax plus, ca, plus cx. So minus 2a plus c equals 3. And then for the linear term, or the constant term, I'm sorry, for the constant term, I have negative 15 on the left, and then I have a minus 2b plus d on the right. So minus 2b plus d equals negative 15. So I've got four equations. In this case, I'm going to label them 1, 2, 3, and 4. And because the way that I can solve this is I can see that there are two equations equations that only have a and c, so equation 1 and equation 3. Equation 2 and equation 4 only have b and d. So I can break this up into two, uh, two smaller systems of equations, each system with two variables. So if I just uh, take equation 1 and 3, and if I take one equation one and subtract equation three, I get three a equals zero, a equals zero, which tells me c equals three. And then if I take equation two and subtract equation four, I get three b equals 20, so b equals eight, which means d has to equal one. So now that I know the values for a, b, c, and d, I can write out the partial fractions decomposition. So our final and fourth case is where we have some repeated irreducible quadratic factors. And so really it's the same philosophy as when we had repeated linear factors. If uh, ax squared plus bx plus c is repeated m times, then I'm going to get a term in the partial fraction decomposition whose denominator is each power of that factor up to, uh, well, it should be ax squared plus bx plus c raised to the power of m. And then each numerator for when you have a quadratic denominator, the numerator is going to be linear. It's going to be a constant times x plus some other constant. So let's find the partial fraction decomposition of 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 2, all over 2x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So that is a repeated irreducible quadratic factor, but it's only one. So should lead to a fairly simple system of equations. Let's see how it works out. So our partial fractions decomposition is just going to be ax plus b over 2x squared plus 1 and then cx plus d over 2x squared plus 1 squared. Let's multiply both sides by the LCD. And that'll give us a polynomial equals another polynomial. We'll go ahead and multiply out uh, on the right-hand side. And now we'll just set the corresponding coefficients equal to each other to get a system of equations. This is fairly simple. Uh, I only have 2a on the right-hand side, so that's got to equal 2 on the left-hand side. I only have 2b times x squared, so that's got to equal 4. Um, for the x terms, I have an ax plus cx, so a plus c has to equal 3. And then uh, for the constants, I have b plus d, that has to equal 2.
And so I get A and B immediately. A has to equal one, B has to equal two. And then um, I can use those values for A and B to find C equals two and D equals zero. And since now I know all of the values of the missing coefficients, I can go ahead and write out the partial fractions expansion. Let's just do one more example and uh, which combines the different cases and uh, just see how that works out. So we have 4x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2 times quantity x squared plus 1 squared. So I have a non-repeated linear factor and I have a repeated irreducible quadratic factor. So what would my partial fraction composition or decomposition look like? Well, I just have a single number over the linear fraction. Then I have bx plus c over the quadratic fraction with just a one for the exponent. And then a dx plus e over the quadratic factor squared as it is in the LCD. So go ahead and multiply both sides by the LCD. When I simplify, I get a polynomial equals a polynomial. I am going to expand the x squared plus 1 quantity squared. I'll expand x minus 2 times x squared plus 1. But now what I'm going to do is a little bit different. Uh, what I'm going to do with the bx plus c and the dx plus e is uh, I'm just going to expand it this way. I'm just going to multiply b and then have x times the polynomial here. And then I just have c times that same polynomial. And I'll do the same thing here. It's just another way of organizing the work. And so again, to get my system of equations, I need to set the corresponding coefficients equal to each other. Uh, so looking at x to the fourth, it looks like I'll have an a plus b will have to equal four. And then for the x cubed terms, three would have to equal negative two b plus c. For the x squared terms, I'm gonna have four from the left-hand side equals 2a plus b minus 2c plus d. Now, there is no linear term on the, or no x term on the left-hand side, but really I could just think of that as being zero times x. So the coefficient on x then is zero. And then from the right-hand side, I get a minus 2b plus c minus 2d and plus e. And then finally, for the constants, I have negative 4 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'll have a minus 2c minus 2e. So this system of equation is the most complicated one that we've had to solve yet. Let's see if we can work through it kind of systematically. So the first equation tells me that b would equal 4 minus a. If I take that 4 minus a and put it into the second equation and simplify, I can see then that c would equal 11 minus 2a. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. So let me go ahead and remove this work. We'll get back to this work in just a minute. So now I have B in terms of A, C in terms of A as well. If I use both of those in the third equation, I can get an equation here which is not entirely in terms of A, but only has A and D. 
And now if I go down to the fifth equation, the bottom equation, I can again replace what I have uh, uh, it for C, I can replace C with 11 minus 2A, and then work that out, and I'll get an equation which relates A and E. And so I'm going to use that relation along with the other relations in the fourth equation. And what I'll do is come up with an, another, a second equation that has only A and D. And so now, if I simplify the third equation, that comes out to be 5A plus D equals 22. The fourth equation, then if I simplify that, it's 5A minus 4D is going to equal 12. And I can go ahead and solve that. If I uh, subtract the bottom from the top, I'll get 5D equals 10. So D has to be 2. That makes A equal to 4. And now I can go ahead and find B and C, as well as E from the value A equals 4. And now that I know all of the unknowns, I can write out the partial fractions decomposition. <laughs>